Welcome to Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole, hosted by two nationally published Atlanta interior designers, Joanne Kandrak and Kelly Cole. These energetic women are also world travelers, charity givers, and bloggers with a wealth of information to share and stories to tell about the interior design world. Okay, now just a warning, this is going to be fun and not too serious. After all, they still do have an interior design business running at full speed. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is episode 66 with Inside Design with Kandrak and Cole. And today we are answering your design questions. But before we get started, we want to tell you that this podcast is sponsored by our friends at Hauser Brothers Hardware. Hauser Brothers is a fully custom manufacturer of drapery hardware. And if you're a designer and you don't know about them, please go look them up right away. It's run by two brothers who are awesome, Jay and Mark. Jay was an expert independent drapery installer, and he designs the new products that are installer friendly and engineered for strength. And Mark... He's the talented metal worker, kind of a big time engineer. And so they are a great pair and they have an incredible reputation, been in business for 24 years. They're our go-to drapery hardware company. So if you need anything from them, their customer service agents known as the Rod Squad, which I think is hilarious, (laughs) is a group of interior designers and drapery workroom owners that have tons of experience so I don't you wouldn't want to talk to anybody but them so they can customize anything template anything everything over a hundred dollars ships free so look them up hauserbrothers.com or you can find them all over social media so we appreciate their sponsorship So, everyone, Google Analytics tells us that you guys really enjoy getting expert advice from us so to keep you happy, we reached out to our listeners via the last podcast and our newsletter and social asking for your latest challenges. And we've got a lot of great, they're always really great yeah, questions are. because I think this is, these questions are things that a lot of people deal with and they're pretty easy for us. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and dive in. So the first one is was from Vicki and Marietta, and I think everybody can relate to this question. How do I determine what size rug to put under a bed? Well, let's clarify. We don't like rugs on rugs. I mean, this would be if you have a hardwood floor. Yes. Well, we do some layering, but that's a whole nother situation. Like if you do a hide on top of oh, a yeah, thin yeah, yeah. sisal or a yeah, sisal on top of a an bed, old antique. If you have but carpet yeah, in your bedroom, don't put a rug in there. Oh, yes, definitely. So... Let's back it up one smidge. Generally, the way we determine rug size is we take the size of the room and we come in on all sides 12 to 18 inches and that's the size of the rug. Now, not every room is that easy. It's not always there's crazy corners and and things like that. So for bedrooms, what you kind of need to decide is do I want my end tables on the rug or off the rug and then you mean your nightstand your nightstand sorry and then go from there would you say yes a lot of times you'll see the rug start right in front of the nightstands and then go forward and either to the end of the bed mm-hmm. or if you have a bench or maybe a cut sometimes people put chairs or a little yeah, settee a little in settee. front of them mm-hmm. that keep would take going it, under keep those. going yeah. until till you get to that part yeah i and and I think the biggest thing with rugs is people think that the only thing in the whole wide world is a ready-made rug. Well, we do, I, I wouldn't you say we do custom rugs way more than we do yeah. ready-made rugs? Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's really not that big of a deal to go to your local carpet store and find a really cool Berber or a Sisal or really any kind of rug and just tell them the exact measurement down to the inch and have them surge it to your size. It just... Nothing bothers me more than a rug that is the wrong size mm-hmm. in a room. Yeah. But also another option is forget the big, huge rug and do two runners on either side mm-hmm. of the bed. So at least when you your feet hit the ground, yeah. you're hitting it's something soft. It's always this big question because a lot of people, people feel strongly one way or the other. Some people really love the softness of a rug in their bedroom. But 
you will, I mean, it seems like a lot of the newer homes being built or when people are renovating, they're kind of doing the hardwoods or everywhere the, uh, throughout. But there's always that person that's like, well, but, you know, I'm losing the softness in the room. Well, there, you know, you can do the runners or you can do that bigger rug to, to have it be a little warm it up a little bit yeah but vicky basically what i would do is get your furniture placed exactly where you want it and then just measure the the width and the full length with with nightstands on the rug and see what that size comes to if you feel like well that really shoves the rug right up to the baseboard i don't really want that then just bring the rug then measure from the I'd say come forward off your nightstands six inches or so yeah. and then go, you know, off off your bed another six inches and measure what that length is. And then and what then I would stay width. away from and I've seen it and it just it plays tricks with my eyes is when it's like halfway under the bed. Yeah, it I just don't really doesn't love look, that. It just it doesn't looks, doesn't look right. It doesn't look right. And always remember a rug pad. I think a lot of people just eh, they figure but and even if something's heavy going on top of it, they think I don't need that. But it really preserves your floors and it preserves your rug. So, so get that rug pad and don't get the little rubber waffle rug pads. They they will ruin your floors. So yeah, you want to get the ones that are have rubber and felt. Overstock has great ones. Amazon has them. Yep. Carpet store will have them. So yep. Okay. Next question from Trudy in Woodstock. Trudy actually had four questions, but they were all <laughs> Trudy. They were all really good and they, some of them relate relate tighter to each other. So yeah. her first one is what are the best investments to get our house sold for top dollar? What will appeal to most buyers? And what upgrades are people looking for most? Okay. So biggest investments. Always, always will be kitchen and bathrooms. Yep. Updated, functional. I think, look at it like from your perspective. If you were going to go out to look for a new house, what would you be looking for? Or what would be the... What would be your deterrent? What like, would be your deterrent? Yeah, exactly. So if you walked into a house and it was laminate countertops and aged appliances and, you know, would you... And laminate flooring would you say oh dear god i don't want to deal with that that's yeah. another hundred grand on the price so yeah. forget it yeah and depending on how the house is priced but most of the time you you want to if you want to sell it quickly anyway th- those are that's kitchen and baths being updated um another one is having neutral neutral paint i mean that's something that someone else can go back and do but if you're looking to sell it quickly and buyers when they're walking in they want to hope not to have to do a lot of work so i think that's another one and upgrades same people are are expecting the finishes to be um granite or quartz Mm -hmm. um not the the cabinets that are low you know the 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 higher the uh, higher heights the higher heights um i think if you are getting ready to sell your house that think there's just so much you can do in kitchens and bathrooms but don't go out and like just quickly do it vanilla just to get it to be quote unquote new there's so much out there even at at discount shops where the tile and stone is super interesting so put some effort into it Buyers these days, at least in our market, do not really want to see anything dark. So that's that's our market. It might be different in yours, but in our market, people really like painted cabinets, grays, neutrals, whites. Uh, They like to see the island being a different color than the cabinets have some interest there. The top of the island being different than the rest of the countertops. They like updated lighting, of course. Stainless steel generally is the appliance finish that we see the most, unless it's really upscale and it's um, integrated with the cabinet facing. I would say closets, you know, and and when if, if you are if your house is on the market clear out those closets like get rid of every bit of clutter that you possibly can because that's just you know that makes it appear bigger and people can you know visualize better without without the clutter the visual clutter the other thing i would say trudy besides kitchen and bath upgrades 
is, and this again depends on where you live in the country, but outdoor living spaces are huge now. So when you see beautiful lounge areas, fire pits, screened in porches, and really decorated with durable outdoor furniture, people are really, really love that. It just, it makes the the house feel bigger and people are just really enjoying those those spaces right now so i think that's an investment that shouldn't you know isn't a big dollar item like and like kitchens it, and bathrooms do it for yourself before you sell it and i mean do, yeah don't, do it way before you're gonna yeah, move enjoy i hate it when yourself. people do this at the last possible yeah, enjoy it for yourself possible second yeah. and yeah and trudy you also asked about <laughs> <laughs> about color challenged humans and and how to choose colors and that is so hilarious we do a lot of color consultations so if you're i know you're in our area give us a call we'll we'll totally help you out but if you don't live in our area go back and listen to our podcast on colors and we name several that are really you can't go wrong with them so so pick those those up color challenge humans there are a lot of them there are a ton i think that's why we have a job thank god (laughs) okay so um coming in from nancy in ackworth i want to replace update the light fixture in my entry the area is eight foot by eight foot and is two stories high my house is 30 years old what should i buy this is a question i would say 80 percent of the homes that we go into Mm -hmm. People like tend to wait to change those number one because they're two stories and they have to get an electrician and it's just not not an easy quick fix. Mm-hmm. But most of them are very very dated, and I guess the biggest suggestion I would say is go bigger than you normally would mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that I suggest is to do something that doesn't have glass involved. It's one of those spaces that's hard to get to. And there's so many beautiful light fixtures that you can do without glass. Yes. And I I really like build.com, Nancy, because you their filters are so great. Like you can go in there and you can say um, ceiling light. You can say your price range. You can say your color. You can say your style. And it really size. size and it really brings it down for you. Of course, you can't go too big because even though it's two story, you it's still above this little eight by eight, you know, area. So I would think probably a 24 width would probably be you can go 30. tall. I go 30. You would. Mm hmm. Um, 24 to 30 and see. Um, and the other thing with these light fixtures don't worry about the finish. I think people are like, oh, but my whole house, my doorknobs and my hinges and my whatever are blank. To me, you can mix. Mm -hmm. I I think that really paralyzes people. And there's, I mean, to me, they're all neutrals anyway, really, if you think about it. I mean, you might, if you don't have a back of gold in your house you might not want to bring that one in yeah. but the rubbed oil bronze to me is still out there i love black um the po- yeah. i don't really love the bright the bright polished or the chrome polished nickel is pretty and it, and it depends on the style of your home as yeah. well yeah so yeah build.com is a really good choice it is and there's so many so many styles you'll see but i think what we're seeing the most is kind of uh, a lot of lanterns yeah. I don't like the ones in foyers that obviously look like a dining table should be underneath them. So kind of sh- dining room chandelierish. Don't put that in your foyer. You want to go tall and narrow. So just just think about that. And I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about the age of your house. It's it's all about the interior of your home and just going with what works. Yeah. So that's a really good question because yeah. lighting to me is something that people just get used to and it's poor generally in all the in so many homes and outdated and it's not a big huge ticket item to completely change the look yeah. of your interiors with new lighting. Yeah. And always put dimmers especially on those um those foyer lights. Oh yeah, and I will say one other thing. We ha- we go into so many homes where the kitchen chandelier is not really over the table. It drives me crazy. And sometimes people will try the, you know, to take the chain and swing it over a little bit, a few inches. Or you see just that poor lighting again. And 
I'll never forget the time that I hired an electrician for the first time and I had a little laundry list of things that I needed him to do, including adding a few outlets, moving some switches that the builder had put like in the middle of the wall and I wanted to put a piece of art there. And it was such a great investment. And I think people think, oh, calling an electrician, that's that's really, you know, ooh. But it's just one of those things that you're like, how did I live with that chandelier or how did I live in this dark room and, you know, spending a couple hundred dollars, five hundred dollars for an electrician to come and be with you for a couple hours to me is a great investment. So just think about that. Okay, Nancy again. Yeah, she had two questions. Asking for her daughter. So she is saying that her daughter just moved into a home with old small kitchen cabinets. She would like to get them painted to update the kitchen and have a matching island built for storage. She doesn't have a bucket of money. Who should she contact? (laughs) Well, a reputable painter, number one, someone who specializes in painting cabinets, you know, that will prime them correctly, sand them correctly, and paint them so they don't chip. We've had, well, Verge Painting is who we use here in Atlanta, and we've had them paint clients' cabinets, and there's one client in particular who had it done probably 10 or 12 years ago. They look exactly mm-hmm. the, d- the same the day that they were done. Mm-hmm. It's got to be done right. But that is a great way to update kitchen cabinets if you you know, definitely can't afford to replace them. And while you're at it, if you've got that great painter, take off all your hardware, have them putty, w- take wood putty and fill all the holes of where your prior hardware was and update your hardware. That is the biggest thing because guaranteed, if you're in a in, in, in an older home, you probably have knobs throughout the whole thing, and it's so nice to mix it up with poles and cups and knobs, and and that really will update it. Yep. But for your island, first of all, your island doesn't really need to match. No, so, actually, it's better if it doesn't. Yeah. So, what's the one that you have in your kitchen? Where'd you get it? Got that a floor decor. They don't make those anymore, though. Yeah, but it mm-hmm. was but it was a ready made one. Yep, yep. I was on Overstock dot com the other day looking at rugs, and they actually have great. Believe it or not, they have great islands, mm-hmm. and probably cheaper than having one built. Uh, depending for sure. on who the carpenter for is, for sure. But. Home Depot has them. I mean, they're really not bad at all. But if I had a little baby kitchen and I was just didn't have a lot of money and I was trying to upgrade, I would. I would do that, but don't don't go and have a contractor like custom make a whole island to match your match your cabinets because you don't need to do that, and it'll probably look cuter if it if it doesn't match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sandra in Kennesaw. How do you design around a laundry room with multiple kids, pets, and sport activities? Well, mm. the very first thing that I would do, Sandra, is empty out your laundry room completely every tiny speck that's in that laundry room pull it out except the washer dryer and then rethink from there and really think about okay what must come back in here because guaranteed there's stuff in there that could probably go in another closet or sports activities garage maybe yeah but this is a place where, like I talked about investing in a in a electrician, I think investing in one of two things, a professional organizer and also custom shelving and four closets is an investment that is so worth it. And it doesn't have to be, you know, California closets or something crazy like you, the container store. If you have a container store near you, they have that alpha shelving Mm -hmm. which is awesome ikea has tons they have the stolman shelving which is amazing and one thing i learned when my daughter moved to chicago and she's a single girl and she's up on the fourth floor and her dad's not around to help her she called taskrabbit.com and taskrabbit is in tons and tons of towns and cities they are recommended by ikea so if you're like I cannot deal with this this is like way above my head and you let's just say you go into Ikea you go into the container store and you and the people there help you out and then you can call TaskRabbit to put it all together for you and come and do it but that's a great service I know it's a great service and you tell them ahead of time exactly what you need and they tell you how much it's going to cost yeah I like that Um, but also I would 
I would lean on Pinterest too. There are for some so great ideas. many great ideas on Pinterest for organizing. Behind the door storage. Oh, you know, yeah. just There's little tricks. And take it to the ceiling. Go all the way up. Put a, put a little step stool in there and utilize every ounce. But guaranteed, there's probably stuff in there that can come out. That's yeah. generally my... Yeah. yeah. It's true. It's a good question, though, because mm-hmm. I think everybody struggles with organizing that that space and laundry rooms are not huge there's usually enough room mm-hmm. for the washer and dryer maybe a cabinet above it but not a lot of extra you know like space yep some of them anyway all right this is an interesting question okay from sarah and marietta would okay. it take away from the value of our home if we did a small built-in bench and table in our current breakfast room area and extended our small island versus having a breakfast nook I, don't I love think that question. I don't think that will do. I mean, I think that would enhance the value of your home. It's um, it's something that's custom. Uh, of course, if it's done really well um, with you know nice carpentry and moldings and has a nice um, cushion and it's done well um, and at, at extending the island, I think people love big islands. So I think that would be um, a great. I think that's a super yeah. great idea. I, I think here in Atlanta we have. When I moved to the south. Uh, they have what we call keeping rooms in the kitchen. I'm like, what is a keeping room? We did not have these in New York. Um, But they're these kind of extra little rooms like off the kitchen. And you're kind of like, what do I put there? Do Do I put a breakfast table? Do I put a, you know, whatever? But I think everybody wants to sit at the island, don't you think? Oh, yeah. Everybody wants to sit at the island. I don't think you could ever do go wrong by extending extending your island and i think a lot of times what what we're seeing in these little nooks and little breakfast rooms is more of a like two really comfortable chairs for coffee newspaper in the morning glass of wine at the end of the day just kind of chitter chatter and then really kind of leaving your your quick eating and casual stuff for the island yeah or even you know someone who's cooking people sitting around and talking like mm-hmm. the cook the person that's the cook isn't off in the corner cooking while everybody's you know visiting over in the you know where the kitchen is so i think that whole island and having all the bar stools around it um makes it a little more it's, it's great for entertaining and great for conversation so. And I think going back to Trudy's question, anything that you can do in your home to make it function super well and be super comfortable and also look good, I think is great for you as you live there and then great, great for resale. Yep. Yeah. All right. One last one. Vicki, who lives in Cumming, she says, oh, this is another great question. How do you create a flow of different types of rugs in an open floor plan so that it doesn't look chaotic? Very good question. Yep. A lot of times you'll see, a lot of time when you go to show houses, you will see the, it's the use of so many rugs. And so how I look at it is they all can't have a wowie gee whiz pattern mm-hmm. uh, layering them. So like, for example, in a family room, doing a sisal of some sort and then layering maybe a hide rug on there. Maybe your hallway has a beautiful, maybe Moroccan kind of colorful something. Uh, maybe another room has a flat weave that just has maybe a, a larger pattern. So it's just like when mixing fabrics. As long as the colors are cohesive and using different styles is really good. I would not put, you know, three medallion type mm-hmm. rugs all in the same area that you can see them all. I think the a good mix of the different types and layering. Yeah, for sure. I in my at my lake house, I, it's one massive room kind of all segmented. So in the in the TV co- cozy area where the sectional is, I have a Stanton rug that I love. And Stanton is a has great rugs that you can serge and and customize the size. I just I love the the yes, textures great and the easy patterns and the, the the neutral colors. So I did a Stanton one over there in a really weird size. I think it's like eleven by thirteen or something. And then in the center, I've got two chairs in front of the fireplace. There's a hide rug there. And then in the dining area, I don't have anything yet. But honestly, I could put anything. I could put mm-hmm. I could put a Turkish patterned crazy rug there. I could put a sisal. I could do an indoor-outdoor. Because, 
I've got these two neutrals on the other side, even though they're totally different. You know, obviously yeah. the hide is its own thing. So I think that's that's really the key. We had a we had a client one time who had an older dog who would not touch the hardwood. And so she literally had this continuance of rug throughout her house so that his poor little feet would never touch the hardwoods. Now that was a challenge when we when we did that for her. So that's that's a really good question. But yeah. just mix it up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well gosh, I love answering these questions. I could mm-hmm. do this all day. Yeah. Um all right. Well we um we've got some good quotes today. Mm-hmm. So I'll do the funny quote, I guess. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you guys follow, there's an Instagram account called Fly Ageless. And it's just a sassy kind of, um, it appeals mostly to women, but kind of sassy, um, sassy Instagram account that cracks me up all the time. Anyway, so this is a quote from there. My dog will literally eat anything I until I put a pill in it. Suddenly, they're Gordon Ramsay. Which, Joy, I didn't know who Gordon Ramsay is. Gordon Ramsay. did? You did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought you said who's Gordon Ramsay. No, I'm like, oh, yeah, I heard you say Gordon Ramsay. I'm like, what do you mean? What about Gordon Ramsay? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just think that's hilarious. My dogs will eat absolutely anything, and then they will they will just, they just know. How does that pill drop to the floor and they eat all the cheese around it? I have no idea. So, They're anyway. Smart little that, buggers. That was hilarious. Okay, so the serious quote comes from Marie Forleo. Yep. Best selling author of the book, Everything is Figure Outable. Uh, this is so true. This really, in a nutshell, mm-hmm. is I feel like business today. Yes. Business today is more personal than ever. It's about pouring your soul into whatever you create. It's about providing more value than anything else in the market and focusing on creating strong, honest, and deep connections with your customers. And I have to say, a person I think that I think about with this mm-hmm. is Sarah Blakely. The, totally. The, the girl. The founder of Spanx. Yeah. The girl is is amazing. amazing and i think she her yeah her whole philosophy is um just she's so natural yeah. i mean and she's so hilarious and she's a she's worth a, over a billion dollars but she's in it to win it i mean yeah. all day long yeah it's, I, it's, I love it's that a, it's it's personal so yeah so yeah. great. Well, I am off to Merida, Mexico in a few days for the Day of the Dead celebration and to meet a relative that my family has never met before. So we're all heading out in a few days. So Joanne's in charge. Oh, I'm, you know where I'm headed off to? I'm going to the dentist tomorrow. Oh, God. I'd rather just pull uh, out my fingernails. Yep. That's what I'm doing. Oh, tomorrow. girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate you reaching out to us and knowing that we're here as a resource for you. And that was that was super fun. So, yep. Have thanks, a great everybody. day. Bye. Bye. Join Joanne and Kelly weekly for a lively conversation about trends, travels to industry events, current design projects, the good, the bad, and the ugly, do's and don'ts, product recommendations, and more. Be sure to follow the fun on Facebook. They're on Instagram, at Candrac Cole. And of course, you've got to visit them online at candrac-cole.com for more information.